All right. Say Shabbat Shalom. All praises to the Most High. It's a nice lesson. It will be called Perseverance. It's a nice lesson will be called perseverance. And like I've been saying in the last couple of lessons, uh, we're, we're here, you guys. It's, uh, it's right on top of our heads. You can feel it. You see it all around you. You have a sense now that this might just happen in your, your generation. You know, you have so many people be like, yeah, I, I know the Bible says that. Or, yeah, I know the prophecy of the Bible. I read it, but that's not going to happen in my generation. So I don't have much to worry about. I still got to worry. If, even if it if it doesn't happen in your time or if it does, you still got to worry. You still got to do the same. So as, as, as an individual, if I say, yeah, it's not going to happen in my generation, I still got to follow the same protocol and follow the Messiah and do the things I need to do to to receive salvation versus someone in 20 years. If it does happen in his generation, I got to do the same thing as that individual if I want to receive salvation. So it doesn't matter. But for us, since now a lot of this is happening in our time, it makes it harder. Because now you're going to go through the trouble, Jacob's trouble, more than anybody else. See, my mom, yes, yeah, she went through some things, but the government has smoothed out. They wasn't, you know, doing what they're doing right now. But the generation before her, of course, it was, it was rough. But now, now that we're getting older, we have kids, and our kids are getting older. Now we're living in a day to where a lot of this stuff that the Bible talks about is going to happen. It's happening. Google Turkey. So go to Google and Google Turkey. And when you go to Google, as soon as you put Turkey in, it should be the very first feed where it says in the news Turkey Coop live updates all right huh no nah, don't click on it so now that we see that put in coop by itself so google the word coop And go to Wikipedia. Well, you don't even have to. Just read the definition that it has right there. We don't even got to go to Wikipedia. Read the definition right there for coup. Coup. A sudden, violent, and illegal seizure of power from a government. So the word coup means illegal an illegal seizure of power from a government. So Turkey right now is going through what's called coup, which means the military is getting ready to take over, overthrow the president there, which means martial law. Okay? Now, you have to understand what the word NWO means. It means New World Order. See, a lot of people that live in America gets it twisted. They hear the word New World Order and they automatically think, oh, it's just America. No. New World Order means the whole world is about to go through a change. And that change will be military takeover everywhere to where now you don't have a president of each country. It will boil down to where now you have three people in charge, which, which will run the whole world. That's what the that's what the government, that's what the military takeover is. All right, overthrow this president of this country, you're nothing no more. 
Get in line and you better hope we don't kill you. And then once they continue to take over each country, each country military takeover, now they'll put three people in place. You three run this world. Everything comes through y'all. So Turkey, that's what they're going through as of right now. Okay. Put in France. So go to go to Google and just put in France. So now that we know Turkey is about to receive martial law. Yeah, and I know we were just watching the news, but you gotta send. They they control the media. So to keep the level of the intensity level down, they'll try to make you see and think that the military in Turkey is working with the president, hands up, and they they're they're gonna seize all all attacks. Nah. Once the world see martial law in one country, it, it, it puts the everybody else in the rest of the world on high alert. They don't want that right now, so they got to find a way to control the narrative to keep people dumbfounded on what's about to happen. You got to understand, it's, it's, it's like a sucker punch. They're going to sucker punch you. with. Before you know it, we're going to wake up and it's going to be boom, boom, boom. It's like a chess game. And they just put in their, their, their hierarchy in position to strike. So when you hit France, it says, so yesterday, I know everybody heard that it, it was like an event going on in France where kids, women, children, men, everybody was like a, some type of event. And they had it sealed off with police, but somehow a truck makes it through the barricade of the police and drives in there and just start busting and running people over and kills 84 people. And by, and by the time the police gets to him, he jumps out the car, out of the truck and starts opening fire. But by this time, he didn't already ran through a crowd of people and killed 84, and they say almost 100 or so is in critical condition, and, and 100 or so more is, is injured. So you're telling me, for real, this truck driver was able to hit almost 300 people before somebody stopped him? Just don't sound right. Then plus, this is the third major attack in France in the last eight months. So you tell me. I, I wouldn't be surprised within the next week or two that France has military everywhere. To, and their reasoning will be it's just been too much going on. We have to stop this. We are a major target right now. We have a bullseye on our back. So since we have a bullseye on our back, we got to bring the troops in to control it. So now you got Turkey. You got France. You got Syria. Syria was already first. How is Syria? Syria is already loaded with who? Russia, Iran, and China. They got troops all in those places. So that place has already been taken over with Russian troops, Chinese troops, and Iran troops. So you got Syria. You got Turkey. You got France. All right. Saudi Arabia, they are already, they didn't already show that they can do it there. America went in and, and, and overthrew Saddam Hussein. So now the individual that's in place there, he's just a puppet. Okay. But over the last week or so, we can see martial law getting closer and closer to America. All right. Just like tonight. That's why I had everybody come here tonight instead of going to the church. Because you had that movie that came out about a week and a half ago. What is it called? Purge Election Year, which is Purge 2. And on that movie, The Purge, it's a day where they let all violence happen. Whether it's murder, 
whether it's stealing, killing, robbing, it's a day of vengeance, basically. If I got a problem with this brother and they allow the purge, I'm, he better he better hope I find him before he find me. Okay, that's what it's about. So I put some information out there to show y'all how they have what's called the day of rage, which is today. And it's just like the purge when you start looking at the videos and reading this everywhere. And the day of rage considers the same events that they will allow in the purge events. Okay? But see, they're sneaky with the day of rage. The way they set up the day of rage is they say, okay, we are going to let these people set up protests everywhere. Okay? We're going to let Black Lives Matter go out, do their thing. Okay? But then we're going to bring in the KKK and let them be on the other corner of the Black Lives Matter. This is basically what they're doing. All right? So Black Lives Matter, yeah, y'all protest, ask for justice. But KKK, y'all go over there. And now we got a group that's called White and Blue and Red, whatever, which represents the police. So now you got all these different groups that don't like each other in one area protesting on the same corner. Go ahead. Knock each other off. Knock each other off. And, and just in Arizona today, there's supposed to be eight to nine protesters in different areas. So they spread it out. You got one downtown. You got one on 24th Street and Camelback. They're everywhere. So everywhere, anywhere that they allow, say, hey, Black Lives Matter, y'all can go protest. We're going to put this police group right here. We're going to put some KKK members right here. It's, it's about to go down. All right. And it's in 37 states. But that's what they allow. But you know, as of tonight go on, every state probably going to do it and get involved. So if I'm a gang member and I bang and I hear the dead rage and I hear this, guess what I'm doing? I'm in the hood acting. I'm, a, I'm in the hood acting the nut then. I can, I can get busy this day. Let's, let's, hey, hey, Kurt, come on. Let's go rob this store. Hey. That car right there. You know, let's rob this dude. Road rage. So anything can happen right now. So to, to take it serious and follow the spirit, that's why I invited everybody here tonight instead of going where we usually go on Fridays. And just that way, if anything does jump off out there, we're here with each other and we're safe. All right. So let's get to the first precepts. It's not a long lesson tonight. I made it kind of short. Just just because I knew, uh, you know, I wanted to talk more about martial law in Turkey right now, what happened in France yesterday, and what's about to happen in America. It's just like a domino effect. It's the EU. The EU, once one country does one thing in the EU, another one follows the EU. It's new world order. Ephesians 6 and 18 is where we'll start. So tonight's lesson is called Perseverance. And we're going to start off in Ephesians 6 and 19. So we'll still finish right around the same time that we normally do, even though we started late. Like I said, it's a short lesson. Go ahead, brother. All right, we're in Ephesians 6 and 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So it says pray always. And supplication in the spirit. So you have to have crying in the spirit and it has to be true. Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Give them the Webster for perseverance. All right. For perseverance, it's meaning persistence in anything undertaken, continued pursuit of prosecution of any business or enterprise begun. So perseverance means persistent in anything undertaken. So anything that's undertaken, you got to be persistent. Persistent in what? Continuing pursuit 
or prosecution of any business or enterprise begun. So if you begin to do something and it begins to get overtaken, all right, then you have to be persistent in keeping it going. Let me say it again. So if you begin to do something and then it starts getting overtaken, start getting prosecuted for doing what you're doing, you have to have faith and confidence and be persistent in finishing off what you started. So a lot of us have woken up to this word. A lot of us have woken up to the truth and said, we're going to follow the most high. We're going to do the things the way the most high say do it. But guess what? When, Mark, when, when, when it gets ugly out there in the street, the government starts letting the cup run it over. And you got all these killings. You got martial law. You got things going on. You have to stick to what you started. Because guess what? You're going to be the first people that these people attack. The people that say, hey, I'm following the most high. This is what I'm doing. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I'm this, I'm this. They're going to attack you to break you down, to bring you right back around to be a, a slave. They want a full 100% slave. Not just a physical slave. They want a mental slave. See, a lot of us, now that we've woken up to the truth, you pulled yourself away from this. So no, you're no longer a mental slave. But they want to bring you back into the mental slave. You have to be persistent the moment they try to overtake you and bring you back into this world and do what they want you to do. Got to be persistent. Say, nah, I found the most high and this is what I'm going to do. What was you telling me earlier about the brother on Facebook? He ran up in his house at two in the morning. This is just recently, right? Yeah, last night. Last night. So if I said he got a, somebody on Facebook that he know, a brother that's in the truth, that be speaking the word, doing videos, everything kind of like how we do. And he said that the brother said that the FBI ran up in his house this morning, around two something this morning or so, yep. and told him he better stop. He better stop pumping the word of the Most High through Facebook and making videos. And if you don't, they're going to take him out. What is he going to do? Is he going to stop like they asked, or is he going to have perseverance? Is he going to be persistent in continuing what he already started? Or is he going to give in to what they say and, and back off and not do the works of the Most High? Because that's what they're going to do. When they find out who you are, they're going to back you into a corner and, and, and try to make you do what they want. All right? But we have to be like uh, Peter and those guys when they... Let's go to... Uh, Acts, Acts 5 and 26. Actually, no, let's start at 25. Acts 5 and 25. We have to be like Peter and the apostles. They come at you like that? Let's, let's, let's read the story and see what Peter and the apostles did. Acts 5 and 25. Go ahead. Right, we're in Acts 5 and 25. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. So before this moment, the, the, the Romans came to Peter and the apostles and said, Hey, y'all can't be, we already killed him off the Messiah. Y'all can't be teaching in his name. So therefore, we're going to throw y'all in prison. And they threw him in prison. And then they let him out of prison and said, All right, now that we let y'all out of prison, we don't want to hear that y'all teaching in his name. So that's why I said right here, behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple teaching the people. So once they got out of prison, Peter and the apostles kept teaching. Verse 26. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. So the people who should have stoned them, but no, the captain officers went and got Peter and the apostles and brought them with violence. Where did they take them? 27 and when they had brought them they set them before the council and the high priest asked them so they took them in before the government and sat them in front of the president verse 28 saying did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in the name and behold ye have filled Jerusalem 
with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Didn't we tell y'all not to teach? You have filled Jerusalem with the word. Verse 29. 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to be to obey God rather than men. We're not going to obey them just because they have us pinned in this corner and they're about to kill us. We ain't going to turn from what we know we should do. Verse 30. 30. The God of our fathers raised up Yeshua, whom ye slew and hung on a tree. So Peter said, this is who we believe in. The individual that y'all killed, that's who we follow. We're not going to follow y'all just because y'all told us not to do this. We're not going to we're not going to get scared of y'all and bow down. So Peter and the apostles were persistent in doing what they knew they were supposed to do, which is teaching the word of the Most High, regardless if they already had been in prison, regardless if they was getting threatened again. They walked in the steps of the Messiah. The Messiah taught them to be like this. And those are the steps that they continue to walk in no matter what. And that's how we should be. So when things get tough out here, it's about to get tough. All right. And a lot of us, they're going to try to throw in the prison. A lot of us, they're going to try to throw in FEMA cancer. If you're still here, they're going to try to throw in FEMA cancer. Whatever the case may be, you got to be persistent. You got to continue and pursue what it is that you already started, which is following the most high. Psalms 37 and 23. So that's that's this is this is part of our trouble, Jacob's trouble. We're going to go through some things and you have to continue to show the most high your strength in these times. So like I said in the beginning. I know I heard my mom. I didn't heard many people say, it. yeah, I follow the Bible. But, you know, those things that's going to happen in the Bible ain't going to happen in my day. They ain't going to happen in my time. We can't say that. This stuff is happening. It's right before us. Psalms 37 and 23. In the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. So the steps of a good man are ordered by the Most High. So the Most High orders all your steps. He puts all your steps into play. All right. So every day you wake up, you're following the Most High. No steps are ordered by Him. But sometimes we might fall. Some of us, walking through this, this rough path that we're on, you might fall. But it says, though he fall, he shall not utterly cast down. Fully cast down. So utterly means fully. So just because you fall doesn't mean you're fully all the way out. For the Most High upholded him with his hand. So just because you fall, because some of us, we're going to fall off sometimes. We're going, some things are going to happen. You're going to get discouraged, but the most high has you. He ain't going to let you fall all the way splat dab on your face to where you're done. You're out. Like I always say, we're in a fight with Satan. You're in the ring with Satan, and Satan's going to, he's going to get you. He's going to knock you out. He's going to knock you down, I mean, but you got to get back up. Now, if Satan knocks you out, then that means you, you devil with Satan too long and then give it back over to the most high because he will you stay in that ring with Satan long enough he will TKO you but you in that fight with Satan he will knock you down but the most high will continue to pick you back up all right Psalms 121 and 7 so in order to be persistent which is perseverance you got to be able to walk the steps that the Most High has put out there for you. You can't do it on your own. See, that's where we mess up when we start trying to walk our own path and do things our way. And the only reason why people start trying to do things their way is because faith is hard. Faith is something that you can't see or touch. So when you can't see or touch something and you don't see it right there, then you venture off into your own and start doing your own thing. But you just got to keep the faith and know, yeah, you don't see it right now. Yeah, you don't feel it. Things are getting hard. Things are getting tough. But I know the Most High is going to make it better. So I'm going to keep walking this way. These are just, This is the way he said go. I'm going to keep walking this way. Go ahead. Psalms 121 and 7. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. So the Most High will preserve you from all evil. If you walk in his steps. He will preserve you from all evil. And like I say, in these last days, 
these days that are happening. We got police is being killed. We got and that, and now, like I said the other day, they say the guy that killed the police was from a black organized group. So now you got so-called African Americans, which is Judah in America, killing police. So now we are we are the terrorists. We 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 one up ISIS now because we shooting and killing police. So now they watching us everywhere you go, everywhere you go. That that bullet is on you. Okay, so you got to be careful. But it says the Most High shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Verse eight, one twenty one and eight. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So once you say you're the child of the Most High and you're going to do the things that the Most High allows you to do and wants you to do, he will preserve thy going out and thy coming in forevermore, forever. He will do this for you. Give them the breakdown of preserve. Preserve. In the Hebrew, H8104. And it means... To hedge about as with thorns. That is, guard generally to protect, attend to. So preserve, which is shamar, means to hedge, guard, protect, attend to. So when it says the Most High shall preserve thee from evil, he shall preserve thy soul, he shall hedge you, he shall protect you. So when you walk, in the steps that the Most High has put out there before you, and then as you're walking in those steps, and evil comes amongst you, and trials and tribulations and things try to overtake you and scare you, you got to be persistent in this walk, this journey. You can't be on your journey and then see a little trouble up ahead and be like, nah, you know what, I'm going to go this way. Nah, stay on that walk. Things get a little rough. Be persistent. You got to go. The goal is this way. The light is over there. No lights over there. That's darkness. No lights over there. There's darkness. Salvation is there because that's the light. So you got to keep going that way. Keep going. Regardless of what happens, these are going to get tough. Nobody ever said the children of the Most High was going to live a luxurious life. <laughs> so what are you going to so stop looking for that light? It's, it's going to be tough on all of us regardless, but it's, it's how you handle it. I got a lot going on myself. A lot of people don't know, though, because I, I handle things in a different manner. But you got to stay on that track. Be persistent. You say you're going to do it. You say your salvation is what you want. Be persistent and stick to it. Don't give up. Because the most high is your head. All right. Proverbs 4 and 18. So the most high will guard you if you walk in his ways. But when things get tough, all you got to do is do what? Like I say, look for the light. Because things are going to get tough. Don't go run into darkness. When things get tough, look for the light. It's like, oh, there go the path. Let me just, let me keep there. And that and that light is who? The Messiah. He will, he will guard you and protect you with all his hands. Proverbs 4 and 18. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. But the path of the just is as the shining light that the sh that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. But the path of the just is as the shining light. That light more and more unto the perfect day. So the path that we're on is the shining light. That path is the same steps that we were talking about that the Most High ordered. So once the Most High orders those steps, that's the path he wants you on. That path, there's a shining light. That shining light represents salvation. Okay? So you have to stay on that path regardless. Hebrews 3 and 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your brothers might as well go ahead and have a seat. Y'all need a Bible? Uh, anybody? Uh, get, these, get these brothers up. This one. This one right here is. Uh, all right when uh hebrews hebrews 3 and 12 
Um, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 12. Yeah, let everybody get there. So, like I said, you got to stay on the right path. All right? And that path is where that shining light is, which is, yeah, that's good. That path is where the shining light is, which leads you to salvation. Hebrews 3 and 12. Go ahead. All right. So Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So it says, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief. So when, once you start not believing in this word, that's an evil heart. The moment you like, you start doubting, ah, you know what? That's, that's that's a bad spirit. Once you start with the evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living power. So once you get that evil heart of unbelief, you will start departing from the most high. So you'll be here with the most high, doing good, doing good, and then that unbelief will kick in and next you know, day by day, you over here. You over here. You're not persistent no more. Now you don't have the perseverance. Because what's perseverance? Give them, give them the definition of perseverance again. This definition of perseverance is persistence in anything undertaken. So the moment these demon spirits, you're doing good, you fall on the most high, and then all of a sudden some stuff start overtaking you. It could be bills. It could be a relationship. It could be people at work where it start overtaking you. You go down, you get a little depressed. Then they should know a couple days later something else will happen. You get depressed again. So now the unbelief kicks in. He's like, you know what? I'll do the most high tomorrow. Then tomorrow turns into next week. Then next week turns into next weekend. Now you're departing from the most high. Okay? Ecclesiastes 10, 10 and 8. So when things get tough, don't let that unbelief sink in. And let you depart from the most high. Because once you do that, guess what happens? The most high will take that hedge. That hedge that we was just talking about, preserving your soul. Remember how we just read the psalm where it says the most high will preserve you from evil and preserve your soul. But the moment you have that unbelief kick in, and that moment you depart from the most high, he will take that hedge away so quick. The hedge is gone. In the moment you don't have a hedge, now Satan's going to attack you on all levels. Got to understand, Satan knows who the chosen people are. Satan knows who's trying to save their soul. Satan knows who's on that path with the shining light. So when Satan see you on that path with the shining light, he want to mess with you, but then he like, ah, I'm not going to waste my time. But then the moment he see the most high take that armor off of you, that protection, that hedge, Satan going, he going to mollywag you. You know, eat you up is like a rock wall. If you walk into the backyard with a rock wall without the owner right there, it's going to be some problems. But if you go into the backyard with the rock wall and the owner of the rock wall is right there, the rock just going to be like, Arr. the owner will be like, hey, chill out. But if you go back there by yourself, it's over. So it's like, this side is with the most high with your hedge. If he ain't walking down the street with you the most high, Satan going to attack you. Going to eat you up. Go ahead. Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. And whoso breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. Break the hedge, Satan's going to bite you. And not only is he going to bite you, he's going to eat you up. He's going he gonna to eat you until you tap out. And what's your tap out? Ahaya, I need you. Ahaya. Ahaya. And Ahaya will come running. Remember I said, Ahaya will let you fall. We just read it. But he won't let you fall forever. He will have that hand there to pick you back up if you come running back. But if you dig a pit, you're going to fall in it. So if you go, so if, if you on that path and you go off the wrong way, you dig that pit, you're going to fall in and the hedge is going to be taken. The certain Satan is going to bite you. But the moral of the story is tonight is 
the things that is about to get put before us here in America, you got to stay on, on track. You can't let this stuff bring in unbelief. You can't let this stuff that's about to happen make you depart from the most high. So tomorrow, they can come and say martial law, FEMA camps. You can be like, oh, man, all right, government, whatever y'all want me to do. No, no. Be like Peter and the apostle. They say martial law. They pull up to your house. FEMA camps get on this bus. Well, you know what? Now, I ain't getting on the bus. What you mean? We're going to handle this in here. I told you I'm not getting on the bus. Simple as that. Because you get on the bus and go to the FEMA camps, you know they're going to chip you up. And you get chipped up, now you're no longer the most high. But you have to be persistent. So you say, hey, I want salvation. I believe in the most high. You got to be persistent. Now that's something you want, you stick with it. No matter what happens, no matter what comes before you, no matter what evil, no matter what tries to overtake you, you stick with it. Hebrews 3 and, 3 and 13, go back to Hebrews. We, uh, we read verse 12, Hebrews 3 and 13. So how do you keep a strong hedge? All right. You keep a strong hedge by associating with members of the body of the Messiah. That's how you keep a strong hedge. So if you got sisters and brothers that's in the word, they members of the body. You stick close to them. You stick around and that's what keeps your hedge strong. That's what keeps you girded in the right direction. But when the moment you start trying to do things on your own and I don't need the body of the Messiah, that hedge will dwindle daily. It will, it will get smaller, smaller, it will get feeble, it will get weak. It's nothing strong about it because we can't do it on our own. I don't care who you are. You can't do it on your own. That's why the, the, the Messiah came and he went and got 12. Say, hey, y'all come be around me so we can make this strong. Messiah didn't need the 12. He could have came and did it on his own. But he came and he found the 12 to make that hedge strong. So that way, wherever they went, the hedge was vicious. So that's how we gotta be. We gotta be the same way the Messiah was. So the Messiah says, hey, I'm gonna build a group. I'm gonna build people around me. That's what we gotta do. No matter how much knowledge you got, no matter how smart you get in this word, you need a body to be around, which is your, your peoples. Hebrews 3 and 13, go ahead. Hebrews chapter 3 and 13 but exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin but exhort one another daily exhort means invite call near that's what exhort means it means hey hey KG hey man what you doing come through all right can I come through invite call near hey let's come together that's what exhort means exhort one another daily while it is called today, don't wait for tomorrow, don't wait for next week, don't wait for next month. Do it today. So daily, we should be trying to hang out. We should be trying to do things. Hey, whether if it's one, whether it's two, whether it's three of us, somebody should always be trying to do something. Don't wait for lessons on Wednesday. Don't wait for lessons on Friday to get together. Throughout the week, sisters, get together. Brothers, get together. Like the sisters put together some other night where they went bowling, took the kids. Stuff like that should be getting done once a week. But the moment you start trying to do things on your own and do the group like this, that serpent going to bite you. It ain't going to bite you every day. And things, things for you is just going to kind of do like this, slowly but surely. And it's just going to get worse and worse. Verse 14. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the be beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So we are made partakers of the Messiah. So we are partners of the Messiah. So partakers mean if, he, if this brother partake in something I'm doing, that means he's my partner. He's like, all right, I like what you're doing. I want to be a part of that. So we are partners of, of the Messiah. So whatever the Messiah did, we got to do it like him. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So we got to be confident in what we're doing. That's how you have persistence. That's how you can be persistent because you're confident this path that you're walking on that has that shining light. You're confident that this is the right thing to do. So that's how you can stay persistent. But if you're not confident in what you're doing, and that's when that unbelief kicks in, that's when you start departing from the most high because you don't even got confidence in what you're doing. Why? Because the world hates you. Now that you're woken up and you follow this, 
The world hates you. Your brothers, your sisters, your, your blood brothers and sisters. See, these are my brothers. These are my sisters. Because this is my brothers and sisters in the body of the Messiah. My blood brothers and sisters, they not in this body. So guess what? I'll pick this ox, that ox, that ox, that aqua, that aqua, that aqua over my blood. And people say, how you, 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 you cold hearted, bro. No, <laughs> no. They want salvation. So I'm going to stick with them. There ain't that much love for my blood family that don't want this salvation for me to pick them and hang out with them now. I'm good. Because if this was the end tomorrow, guess where they going to be? They going to be on the left. Looking at me and wondering how I got over there on the right. All right, this is true. Genesis 32 and 24. So I'm going to stick with my people that say, hey, I want salvation like you, brother. They dress like me. They look like me. Hey, I'm, I, I'm with you. All that other nonsense. I'm cool with you. As long as you can let me teach you this word. If I can't teach you this word, then out of here. Shalom. Shalom is the new adios amigos. Shalom. Genesis 32 and 24. Go ahead. All right. Genesis 32 and 24. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. So Jacob is in a situation to where he has to have some perseverance. Jacob was in this situation for a reason. Let's find out what the reason is. Verse 26. Genesis 32 and 26. And he said... Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. So the angel said to Jacob, let me go. And Jacob said, nah, I'm here for a reason. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. So this was part of Jacob's perseverance. The angel touched Jacob and put his, his thigh out of joint to where, hey, hey, thought that would make Jacob back up. Jacob kept wrestling, one leg and all. I'm wrestling. And the angel was like, let me, let me go. Jacob was like, nah. One thigh. I'm keep going because I'm I gotta I'm persistent in what I came here for. I came here to be blessed. So I'm giving you the story so you can see. I'm giving you certain stories in the Bible how the individuals were persistent in what they were doing. Jacob didn't say, ah, my thigh is out. I'm going to come back. Hey, I'm, I'm going to see you next week. No, nah, Jacob said, bless me now. Or you're going to have to touch the other thigh and bring it out of joint. All right. Break down the word prevail. So it said uh, in 35, and when he saw that he prevailed not against him, break down prevail. Prevail. Being the Strong's H3207 to be able could endure, might overcome, have power, prevail, still suffer. So prevail is H3201, H3201, and it's Yakawa, Yakawa, Y A K A W A L, Yakawa, and it means be able, endure. Overcome, have power, prevail, suffer. So now here goes the word endure. So we're talking about tonight's lesson is called perseverance. We talked about being persistent when you're trying to persevere. Then we talk about prevail. Now we got endure. So all these words are in the same family. Perseverance, persistence, uh, Prevail, now endure. So you're going to suffer some things. So it says suffer and prevail. So you're going to suffer some things, but you have to endure. 
have perseverance when you start suffering. When things start going wrong, things don't look like they're good. Things just not adding up for you. You try to go out and you do this, it don't go right. The next morning, you try to go do something else, just don't go right. So now you're starting to suffer some things. Don't go, don't, don't get down. You have to endure. We gotta, we gotta endure those things. The Messiah had to endure those things when the Messiah came. Everything wasn't just peachy and king when he walked this, this earth in flesh. Everything wasn't just going his way, which it could have, but no. He was going through things left and right. He had to endure. That's your test. So the Most High says, I'm going to put you through a, a line of tests, and I want to see how you're going to endure. I want to see how you're going to deal with these things, which is that path. We're on that path. So once things get rough and you start suffering, you can't run away from it. Man, this road is tough, so I'm going to go to that road. Like, okay, this road is jammed up. Richard Sherman, this is what we call traffic in Arizona. So the traffic is thick. You're like, man, Richard Sherman out there jamming the traffic up. Man, I'm going to get off the freeway and go this way. Try to find less traffic. You can't do that on this path. Once you say you're on this path, finding the most high, you own the path, things get a little rough, you can't try to go find another road. You got to find a way to get past Richard. Learn some new moves. You got to go practice, go learn some moves, to get some juke moves to get around it. But you got to endure it. You got to keep going and stay on that road. James 1 and 12. These, 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 are, these are our trials. You're being tried. I promise you. That's when you say thank you, Ohio. If you're going through some things and it ain't getting no better, and then you continue to go through things, and then it just seems like they get worse and you're at an all-time low, that's when you turn to the Most High and say thank you. Why? Because now the Most High, you know you're a child of the Most High because he put you through that. If you ain't getting put through things left and right, then that means you ain't a child of the most high. 27 and 28. Huh? Nah. We ain't no better than his son. When he put his own son here, he made his son go through the most. Read the story of the Messiah. He went through the most. So you ain't no better. You're going to have to go through the most yourself. And when you're going through the most, that's when you turn to the most high and say, thank you. I, I know one of yours. You, you put me through this to see how I'm going to act. That's love. James 1 and 12. Go ahead. All right. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So blessed is the man that endureth temptation. So temptation, what does the word temptation mean? We broke it down the other night. Temptation means trials and tests. That's what temptation means. You're going to get tested. Certain things are going to get put in front of you. You're going to be tested. But anyone that can endure these tests, for he is tried. You're being tried. The Most High is just trying you to see, okay, you say you love me. You say you want salvation. I'm about to try you then to see if you're going to. If you're going to give in. All right. You didn't give in. All right. Let's go. Keep walking. That's all it is. Matthew 10 and 22. That's all it is. He just he just testing you. Because once you say you're his, once you say you're giving your life to him, once you say you want this path, he's going to try you. And he's going to keep trying you. It ain't just one test. It ain't just two. It could be two tests in one day. He's going to put you in something and you're going to be like, man, what's going on? You can have a flat tire, and then the next day have a flat tire. Y'all know Sister Brittany? Two weeks ago, she had three flat tires in one week. I'm just trying to put an example out there. Like, every time she got in a car, she had a flat. I was like, it was crazy. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. But the, the, but, but I'm trying to show you, though, the most is going to keep putting certain things on you to see what you do. It's going to test you. Little things like that. See, people... They have a flat tire and they lose their mind. They go crazy. It's just a small test. It's just something like that. It's small because it's preparing you for the big test. Like we got some big things that are about to happen here in America. And if you're still here, he want to make sure you're ready for what's about to happen. He want to make sure you're going to have the spirit and the faith like Peter and the apostles. Matthew 10 and 22. Go ahead. 
All right, we're in the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they press, persecute you in the city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. So you're going to be hated for the Most High's, for the Messiah's name's sake. So just like I said, when you go out and you teaching this word, and you say, hey, I'm a child of the Most High, you wear your fringes, you got your metri on, people are going to hate you. They're like, man, what's wrong with you? Why are you dressed like that? What you? They're going to start hating on you. All right, but you got to endure it. Family members, friends, they're going to hate on you, but you got to endure that. If you want to be saved, you got to endure it. But when they start persecuting us, like I say, here in this city, which is America, they're going to start persecuting us. It says flee. Once they start persecuting you, flee to another. The scriptures tell us to flee. The scriptures tell us to leave here. So once they start persecuting us here, leave and go to another. And it says go to any other city but Israel. Don't go to Israel until the Messiah comes. And once the Messiah comes, then we make our way back to Israel. Matthew 24 and 1. So this scripture right here lets you know right here that the individuals that are sitting in Israel right now calling themselves the true Jews, the Jewish people, are false. Because it tells us don't go back to Israel until the Messiah comes. So who are those individuals Standing in Israel right now talking about they the true people of the most high. Same people Hitler said, hey, I'm going to kill y'all bastards. That's what Hitler said. I'm going to kill y'all bastards because y'all don't know who y'all are. Claiming to be the true people, so I'm going to kill y'all, you, 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 you liars. That's who's sitting over there right now. Matthew 24 and 1. Mm -hmm. Book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 1 And Yeshua went out And departed from the temple And his disciples came to him For to show him the buildings Of the temple And Yeshua said unto them See ye not all these things Verily I say unto you There shall not be left here One stone upon another That shall not be thrown down So the apostles went and showed the Messiah All these buildings all these temples Which is all these churches all these different things where people are, 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 are having their worship and stuff. And the Messiah says, man, I don't care about them things. Listen, let me tell you something. There shall not be none of these buildings standing when I'm done with them. So the Messiah is going to take, he's going to tear all those temples down, all those churches, because they don't got nothing to do with him. He don't care about all that stuff. He, he likes this. He likes it when we get together in a setting like this. So we don't got to be in no big old church. All made hand, made by the hands of men. Messiah says those are going to get thrown down because ain't nothing going on in there, but it's a monetary game. Verse 3, 24 and 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So the Messiah says, well, I'm going to be gone here pretty soon. They're going to kill me off and I'm not going to be around. So the disciples said, well, tell us what's going to happen then when you come back. How we know the signs. Give us a sign when you come back. Verse 4. 24 and 4. And Yeshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So the Messiah says, when you start seeing all these things, don't be troubled. Don't get scared. Why? Because these things must come to pass. These things have to happen in order for me to come back. So if any one of y'all want to receive salvation, the only way you can receive salvation is if I come back. And the only way I can come back is if these things happen. So once you start seeing, like what the stuff we're seeing on TV, don't fear it. This stuff, this evil has to happen. You remember the lesson we did about five months ago where it was one of the end times lesson where we talked about the, the Most High said there's a measure of evil that has to happen in this world in order for the Messiah to come back? We're, that measure. So the, the Most High already has. He says, all right, I got a cup and evil has to get 
to right here. And once evil reaches that point, then I'm sending my son back. And the evil, you guys, is probably right here. It's there. So the Messiah, the Most High already says, I got a, a measure of evil that this world has to hit. And once the evil hits that measure, I'm sending my son back. And you guys, we there. It's come, it's here. Verse 7, Matthew 24 and 7. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So you're going to have nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, people against people, government against government. That's what we have right now. People against the cops, cops against the people, race against race. It's here. Go ahead. Verse 24, 24 and 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall the, the then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That's what we have, you guys. They're going to deliver us up. The moment they start bringing in the martial law, they're going to, they're going to round you up and kill you because they know who you are. They're going to know who we are right off the bat because they're going to see us with fringes on, Mitri's on. They, they already know. And through the intelligence of their technology, when they do rally people up, they already going to know who everybody is. So if they send the troops to your house and got a bus outside, they already know who's in the house. They already know what you're about. They already know if you have weapons or not. They know everything about you. So like, for example, if the troops came to this house right now, they're going to approach it with caution. Why? Because they know what's in here. They know it's a few things in here that got a, a, a lot of rounds that will make the first units back right up. So they know what's in here. So if they did approach this house, it's going to be with real the procedure is going to be cautious. But a house they know that don't got a firearm or something, boom! Windows, everything, all at once. Not here, though. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to be real strategic. They just run up in here. 20 of them going down right now. 30. Maybe 100. Let me be in the right spot. A lot of them will go, go down really quick. But that's that's what we have, you guys. Skip down to verse verse twelve, Matthew twenty four and twelve, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So the iniquity shall abound. So the sin will rise. It's going to be huge, and the love of many shall wax cold. There will be no more love. The more and more that the sin grow here in this world. The more and more people are going to turn and start hating. There won't be no love because everybody's going to be every man for himself. Everybody's going to be for himself trying to get ahead. Robbing you, own boys, robbing each other just to feed his family. But the people that can endure until the end will be saved. The people that can be persistent until the end will be saved. Revelations. 2 and 10. We got about five minutes left. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give thee a crown of life. So fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. That's called FEMA camps. Those are the FEMA camps. When they bring in martial law, they're going to try to take people to the FEMA camps. That's what it means. People, Some of you are going to be cast into prison. But you got to be faithful unto death. So if they do throw you in the FEMA camp, don't give in. Don't do what they say you do because now you're scared. Nah, you stick with being a child of the Most High, let them know. Just like Peter and the Apostle, nope, I'm the child of the Most High. I'm not doing that, nope. Because they're going to try to stick like me. They know I don't eat pork. They know I don't eat meat. 
They, if I, they did throw me in a FEMA camp, guess what they're going to throw in front of me and try to make me eat? Pork. They're going to try to make you go against everything that you have become. Nope. Same thing Kunta did. You put that pork in front of Kunta, what he did? Pork, Kunta hit that, that place so tough because he Kunta knew. Listen, I, hey, nah. That's another good example. You got you to gotta be like that. You got you to gotta be strong to your roots. Hebrews 10 and 32. We got to fight. We got to fight through this. And the only way you can make it through this is by being part of the body of the Messiah. When you're part of the body of the Messiah, now you got individuals that can fight this with you. That's your hedge. You got to keep that strong hedge. Hebrews 10 and 32. Go ahead. All right. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 32. But call to remembrance the former days in which, after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction. So it says, remember the former days. So a lot of us that's in here is telling you, remember, before you was woken up to the truth, remember how it used to be. Before you was woken up. That's what illuminated means, like, enlightened. Ye endured a great fight of affliction. So you had a lot of afflictions that happened to you, and you endured them. Verse 33, 10 and 33. Partly, whilst ye were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly will she become companions of them that were so used. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. So when they... The compassion of me and my bonds being in prison, you're in bonds, you're locked up, you're in shackles, all right? But knowing in yourself that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. So if something's going on and you get cast in prison, you got to know, remember, what I got coming with your salvation, it's a better enduring substance. 35, 10 and 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. <laughs> For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So it says, have patience. No matter what you're going through, have patience. But the just shall live by faith. So when you have patience, you live through faith. Because you can't, like I say, faith is something that you can't touch, you can't see. So you got to have patience and believe in that it's going to happen. See, a lot of people get on patient when they can't control it when they can't touch it or see it they lose they, they lie i don't got control over this i don't like this so they go another route to try to get control patience and having faith that's what we need but it says in verse 38 if any man draw back so if any man is in the truth but then he draw backs and go the other way it says my soul shall have no pleasure in him so you can't go back no matter what's happening and what's about to happen you guys we're going to be hit hard here I can't keep stressing that enough. Look what's going on in Turkey. Look what's going on in France. Look what's going on in America. Venezuela, it's all around us. Like I said the other day, you had the Bahamas last week telling their residents, don't go to America. It's dangerous. So now other countries is looking at us like, don't travel there because some stuff is going on. But the Most High says, don't draw back into perdition. Don't, don't fall back into that world. He don't have pleasure in that. Second Peter 3 and 15. So you have to be uh, persistent. Like I say, you're on this journey. It's a journey on. You got to be persistent on that journey. You got to keep walking. You got to keep walking. And there's only one path. Let me tell you that. It ain't many paths to salvation. There's only one road to salvation. So don't let nobody think that you got your role. I didn't. I didn't heard people tell me, "Well, I got my role to salvation, and you got your role." We all got different paths. Show me that in the scripture where it says everybody has their own path 
to salvation. No, there is one path. What's that path? The path that the Messiah came down here and led by example and showed us where we needed to go and how we need to do it. That's the one path. That's the only path. He don't got his own path. I don't got mine. So don't let nobody lie to you. Because that, that, that doctrine is a path to destruction. So you need to find that one path that the Messiah came down here and put before us. And once you find that path, you say, okay, that's the path that the Messiah did. That's where he did. Okay. Get on it. And it's going to be rough. Because it was rough for him, so it's going to be rough for you. It's the same path. We got to endure the same suffering that he had to suffer. But ours is a little tougher. Why is ours tougher? Because we're not as mentally strong as him. So he was, he was, he was, he was built for this. The Messiah was built for this, this, this suffering. So that's what made it easy for him. Us, we ain't, we wasn't built for this. That's why he came and died for us. Because he knew many of us, the moment you got on the path, you got out of there within days. Second Peter 3 and 15. Go ahead. Second Peter 3 and 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. The long suffering. So this suffering is going to be long. Go ahead. Even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore beloved seeing ye know these things before beware lest ye also being led away with the heirs of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Yeshua Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So that's all we need. You just got to grow in grace and continue to learn the knowledge of the Messiah. And you can't go no wrong. You will receive glory and salvation. But through this, you're going to have a lot of suffering, long suffering. That's why I said in verse 15, and account that the long suffering of our, our power is salvation. So through that long suffering, it will bring salvation. Last scripture of the night. Revelation 14 and 12. So you got to stick with it, though. All right. The suffering is going to be long. The suffering is going to be hard, but you can't give in. Got to take them on. Challenge after challenge. Challenge after challenge. All right. Wake up in the morning. All right. Here goes another challenge. Like, uh, like the song Tap Out by... Chaya Shawab and uh, John Boy. They said, we're going to make these demons tap out. So these demons going to keep coming, but they said, we're going to make them tap out. So every day, you, that's how you got to approach it. You got to be like, all right, I know Satan coming. Watch this. Watch this move I got for Satan today. Watch him tap out. And that's how you got to approach each situation. Each situation, which is temptation. You're going to have many temptations throughout the day. And see, like I say, so many people, you get they get the word temptation twisted. They automatically think temptation is lusting after another human or lusting after somebody. No, temptation is, it means trials. It means tests. So different tests you're going to put, be put in in different trials. So it's like a man that's been put on trial every month. So you go to trial before a jury and a judge, people are like, man, this is, this is weird. That's, I don't like this. this. That's what you get put on. Every day, every week, the Most High is putting you on trial. Because he's just preparing you for the real trial, which is judgment day. When he sends his son back and then he come back, you're going to be put on trial before the most high. And if you did good with all these little trials that he put you on and all these little tests and you passed them and you did good and you endured, you had persistence, you got through them, you didn't give in. Now when you get on the real trial, and the most high look at you and be like, well done. You passed that, you did good on that one, I put that one in front of you. You didn't give up, you endured, you suffered. Step this way. But somebody that gave it, man, I mean, he always put me through this. If there was a God, why am I always struggling? Most I can be like, okay, you know what? 
I don't even want to talk to you. Just go. Go that way. There's no talking. Revelations 14 and 12. Go ahead. Revelations 14 and 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yeshua. So you have to have patience. And through the patience, you keep the commandments of the Most High. You keep his laws. You keep the statutes. Through your patience, you keep his laws. You keep his statutes. You keep his commandments. And this was, is what's going to keep your head strong. This is what's going to keep your head strong. All right? So with that in mind, we'll close it out with that last scripture. And uh, I can't stress it enough, you guys. We, we are in a time to where don't nobody know the day. Don't nobody know the hour. Don't nobody know how it's going to happen. But we are in that time to where things are about to go down. And you just got to be ready. But don't give up. Don't give up now. Don't give up when it happens. And don't give up when you're in the middle of it. All right? And your brothers, your sisters that's in this word, these are the people that you need to be drawing, exhort. We read that word tonight. You need to be growing closer with them daily. And I was explaining this to somebody the other day. I believe it was uh, B. We are in a time where if you need something from your brother or sister, say something. Say something. This is what we're here for, to help. Don't be prideful and shame. Oh, well, I need some, but I ain't going to ask Brother Kurt because. But you know the reason why we won't ask, especially Judah, because we, Judah, he can have it. He can be doing well. But then he can be like, man, I ain't helping nobody. I ain't. We, we, we like that. But if you got it, you should always have an open hand to help. And if you don't got it, you should always have an open spirit to ask. And if we can work on that as a people, the person that got it and that's doing all right, reach out to your brothers and sisters and help. And then the person that's not doing as well, open your spirit and ask. And that will bring us most closer. That will, that will break that dividing line. See, a lot of us are not close because one is either here, he's doing really well, and he's kind of stingy, and then you got one down here who's just prideful and ain't going to ask, and so now it makes, it does that. But if we break that burial, then we can come a whole lot closer as a people. So with that in mind, we'll say Shalom. All praises to the Most High. Let's pray it out.